Ms. Ford, good afternoon again. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for um, taking the time to come to address the committee on the matters uh, addressed in the report of the Auditor General of the Transport Borders Operations 2015-2018. You are accompanied again by Mr. Pierce, uh, who is offering counsel to yourself. Co correct. Good afternoon. I need to remind you that you are still um, making your submissions to the committee under affirmation, and that's st that still holds, still applies. Addressing you first, as if you're ready, Ms. Ford, would be Minister uh, Husbands. Are you quite settled, uh, Ms. Ford, already? I've just got in my specs. Okay, I'm ready now. Thank you very much, Ms. Ford. I just want to take you back to um, our conversation from last time. Um, we had spoken about some of the unusual events that would have taken place in relation to spending and reimbursement of the credit card for the chairman who would have purchased some equipment online. And um, I think we'd spoken then about the issue of the reimbursement and whether or not the item or items were approved for purchase prior to the chairman um, using his personal credit card to get the items for the transport board. So your question is whether or not there was prior approval? Yes, if there was prior approval on it. If I'm not mistaken, I think I left a copy of a memo, a board paper, mm -hmm. which clearly stated that I was requesting post-approval. That it was? That I was requesting post-approval. Post-approval. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think at the time you said that this was not necessarily a habitual thing that happened at the board during your time. That's the first thing. That was the first time that you'd experienced that? First and last. First and last, okay. Now, during the period, one of the things that um, the Auditor General's report had shown up was the constant repairs that were being done to certain vehicles all the time. And uh, some predated you, but I noted that there were some that would have occurred during the time when you were general manager that there were certain buses like um, B125, 122, and so on that had gone for uh, frequent transmission changes. And uh, during your time there, um, let's take, for example, BM109. It went to one company service provider on the 11th sorry, on the 9th of November in 2016 to install a transmission. And uh, by January of the following year, the 16th, it had another transmission installed by the same company. Then in 2017, in February 28th, it went to a different company and repairs were done to the transmission. And then 2017, in March, it went back to the same company to overhaul the transmission. The total cost to the transport board was about $89,000. So based on how management does its oversight of the various 
entities, the various departments, would this have come to your attention? And if it did, what did you do or what did you put to the board to seek to remedy a situation such as this? You're finished? Mm -hmm. That would not have come to my attention because it's the supervisor or the manager who is directly responsible for that area to whose attention it would be brought to. But that wouldn't be brought to my attention. So I wouldn't be able to answer that question accurately. So during management meetings, a situation like this would not have been raised with you? No. And the accountant um, would not have raised something like this with you? The accountant or the financial controller? Because there are two positions, it's financial controller and the accountant. Financial okay, controller, no. Would not have been raised. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Finish. Thank you, Minister Husband's audit office. Husbands, could you turn off your microphone, please? Good afternoon, Mr. Trotman. Yeah, yeah, uh, do you want to take the lead? Go ahead. Yes, yes. First of all, let me apologize for being a little bit late. Um, just a couple questions for. Having difficulty hearing. Okay, okay, sorry. I don't know if you can take off your mask or not. I don't know if you can take <laughs> yeah. the mask off. Oh, I'll try, I'll try to. I think I would have asked um, General Manager, past General Manager, a few questions already. But I will just ask a, just a few questions. Um, the audit that we undertook, we were sort of carrying out an assessment of the Transport Board's its effectiveness and its efficiency over the period of time. Mr. Trotman, you may need to take, remove my print mask so we can hear. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Sorry, sorry. That's right. okay. Um, I think the last time we met, I did ask a few questions to Ms. Ford, but just to reiterate. And uh, excuse me, Mr. Trotman. Marshall, you still not here? Could you find from the technical people if there's any way to raise the volume? I can speak, I'll speak into the mic some more. It may not be you. It may be the volume is controlled. Okay. Can you hear me better? Yeah. Oh, okay. Right, as I said, um, I did ask a few questions the last time Ms. Ford was here, but just for clarity, um, and we, we are a little behind in the sense that it's a little time that this happened. Um, what, it, what I was asking, is, what I was indicating is that we had conducted the audit to have a, a sense of a assessment of the efficiency and effectiveness of the transport board operations. And we noted some things that you know, um, like for instance, we realized that they had a steep decline in revenue. Um, ridership was also down significantly. Um, there were a lot of, in some cases, surplus drivers, lengthy wait time for commuters, difficulty in making payments to suppliers, frequency of rep repairs, which were sometimes seen as costly. Um, and to me, I wanted an assessment basically in terms of since you were the head of the organization for that period as to why these things occurred, what action the board would have taken um, to rectify them. Reduction in revenue will be as a result of few buses on the road. Um, there was the other question. Well, there was not only the reduction in revenue, there was mm -hmm. a reduction in ridership. Ridership would go hand in hand with the fact that there weren't enough buses on the road. Right. And we were looking at the factors that caused these to occur and what the board would have done. Inadequate funds being received from the Minister of Finance. Minister of Finance. Hmm?
sorry. Inadequate funding for Ministry of Finance. Right, um, in terms of? Because we would have, every year we submit um, a supplementary mm -hmm. requesting funds to cover our operation for the financial year. Mm -hmm. And you would find that sometimes what we find to be re a realistic amount to assist us with the operations of the financial year, the Ministry of Finance didn't, uh, didn't agree. There was always a fixed figure that you, we would receive. So tell me something, because the, the transport board is providing a social service to a certain extent, and it's also seeking to operate in a way, in a commercial way, because it, it's competing with the, yeah. the minibuses and things. Mm, yes, do, yes. do you distinguish between the two and so on? Well, uh, we need, um, in terms of school children and the elderly and so on, X amount, and then we will sort of make the difference in terms of the commercial. Do you distinguish between the two of them or not really? No. So how would you know if, um, like, in terms of the subsidy that you're asking for, is it as a result of a shortfall in terms of the commercial activity not being, um, making its fair share of the, of the pipe, so to speak? How do we? You have, on one hand, you're trying to provide a social service. Mm -hmm. So you're asking government, well, look, in order to supply the social service, we need X or Y amount. Could you, could you come up with a figure like that? No, everything is done in one, everybody's lumped together. Okay. So tell me something that during this period, and um, as you said, you had a lot of, because of inadequate funds, you were not able to put a lot of buses on the road, right? Mm -hmm. What happens to the drivers, the surplus drivers at that particular point in time? How do you deal with that? Like the fact that you might have a lot more drivers, because if you had 300 buses and now you only have 50 or 60, what? I'm just trying to understand what will happen to the drivers. When we had, I don't, I was, in my ten, during my tenure, we never had 300 buses on the road. That's just a it was approximately okay, two, 225. Mm -hmm. what, um, that's the maximum I, I can recall. And during that period, my tenure, we retrenched persons during that time in 2014. So a number of drivers were um, retrenched at that time. So back to the question I was asking about in terms of the subsidy and so on. So it wouldn't make sense for you to indicate to government, well, look, we need a subsidy of X amount because we are providing a social service as distinct from the other aspect. You said all was lumped together. Because to some extent, you don't want government to necessarily to be providing for the inefficiencies that of the operations otherwise. So let's say, for instance, that you need $20 million for the school children and the elderly. Then obviously, we expected that government has asked you to do it, so they will provide you 20. But if you're asking for 25 or 30, then that would be a little challenging in that regard. When the supplementary is done, mm -hmm. we look at the incoming revenue and we look at the expenses. So based on the trend for um, passenger fares and based on the number of buses that we anticipate we'd have on the road, that's how we, cal we calculate our um, projection of revenue for passenger fares. Sim the similar thing is done for school children and old age pensioners. And based on that, then you ca we calculate our expenses, particularly wages and salaries, on the number of drivers we think we would need to deliver that service. All right, just two more questions. So in terms of the whole issue of inadequate funding, you indicated that that was your major problem. Yes. So the, the yes, provision of funding would have, you think would have solved the issue that you would have? Yes. Or are there other issues other mm -hmm. than funding? Well, funding was the main problem. Because when we look at funding, over the period that we looked at, you had a, like perhaps as much as close to $400 million if you look at the revenue and the subsidies during that period, uh, about 270 something million or 78 million, dollars, 400, sorry, 370 something million dollars during that period. But that, you don't think that, you need a lot more than that. Then there were some expenses that we couldn't control, such as diesel costs mm -hmm. that kept fluctuating. 
and, and more on the higher side and the lower side. And of course, wages and, and salaries. Right. And repairs and maintenance. So you don't, you don't think that operational efficiency would play a part because you, you, know, you, you indicate that you want more funding, but if you're not operating efficiently, even if you get more funding, you would just be kind of wasting resources. So basically what I want to ask is what you would have done in terms of trying to improve the operational efficiency of the organization. First, uh, let me um, just state that the buses that we had um, on hand, the oldest bus was like 25 years old. And in order to run more efficiently, as you would ask, I think we would have needed to purchase more bus, new, newer buses. I think the oldest bus was in 1997. And the youngest was two, at that time, well, I was there, 2006. Right, so he was asking, how did you respond? I mean, you're saying theoretically, yeah, you should purchase more buses, but how did you By actually writing respond? to the ministry, uh -huh. various ministries, for assistance, purchasing new buses, explaining why. Several writings, not one. Ask you for funding or buses? Both. Of course, not in the same correspondence. So that was your major, the main way which you, you tried to tackle the problem? Yeah. Any other areas in terms of the actual operational efficiency that you would have tackled? We looked at seeing that we have extended all of the possible um, areas that we could have, we looked at having a special project where we would have picked out certain, certain buses that we think we could fix, the, low, the ones with the low hanging fruits. And for that, we did, got assistance from the fleet management consultant through the board of directors. And was that successful you, in your view? Pardon? Was that project successful in your view? In my view, it was. How would you gauge that success? During the period, I'm just speaking off the top of my head, no but during the period, um, the last financial year that I was there, repairs and maintenance was reduced considerably. Right. That would all be included in the repairs and maintenance. Sorry, that's it? Yes. But in terms of your fleet, your fleet at that particular time was reduced considerably as well. So how do you know that the repairs were not as a result of the fleet reduction rather than efficiency as opposed to? No, I'm saying that you, you had indicated that at some point in time, the highest amount of buses that you had would have been 225. That was way back in 2010, yeah. 2008. Right. No problem. Yeah. Um, by the time you left, how much was it? Um, operational, well, about between 80 to 100. Right, so the bus fleet was cut in half, so to speak. Okay. So if your cost is reduced, is it your cost a factor of the fleet reduction rather than efficiencies? No. To, to a point, to a point, to a point. Because you're saying that we would have had less buses on the road. I'm asking, right. Which is true. All right, so are there any other factors that you want to mention in terms of efficiency, in terms of initiative that the board would have undertaken? Or no. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Trotman. Um, Ms. Ford. Yes. Um, based on your role at the transport board as, as mm -hmm. general manager, um, would it have come to your knowledge, would you have formed the opinion, would you have been led to believe that the transport board customarily had a high number of defective buses on the road? That statement was put to this, in effect, to this committee earlier. Would 
that the board was cash strapped, <laughs> that the buses were under stress because of the smaller number of overuse, and there were a lot of defective buses on the road. I would say that every day at the transport board, we had some what we call running defects of about between maybe 12 to 20 buses. And those running defects, would, those buses would be leave in the morning about quarter to five in a good shape. And then by, by about 7, 38, 9, they're back in the yard for simple things like wipers or um, I am not a mechanical person, but for simple things. So that's what we call running defects. So I, I wouldn't phrase it as we had a lot of defective you, you, buses on the road. You would not agree with any statement we suggested at the transport board because of the pressure of small number of buses, um, lack of financial support from the ministry, um, put a number of buses on the road customarily that in effect were so defective beyond those simple things that they pose a threat to life and limb of people. You would not say that? I would not say you that. You would disagree with any statement to that effect? I wouldn't say that. That would have been dangerous. Uh, yeah, it would be. And yes. you would disagree with any opinion coming out of the transport board that suggested that that was the case? That was not the case. That wasn't right. the case. As I said, it was a running defects. All right. It's a running defects. Small issues. Small issues. Um, sitting from where I was sitting. Okay. And that was on a daily basis. You chaired the management meetings? I chaired, when I first went to transport world in 2010, I chaired management meetings on a monthly basis. First, we started out every, having them weekly, every Tuesday. But to my mind, I'm being in management for a number of years in, in the private sector. I found that having those meetings on a weekly basis proved nothing because from week to week, you have the same concerns recurring. And in my opinion, I thought that monthly would have been more adequate. So you shifted to monthly meetings? Yes. So during the, tenure, the, the period under review by mm -hmm. the Auditor General's Office covered in the report, 2015, 2018, 2018. Mm -hmm. there would have been approximately how many meetings held if you shifted from weekly to monthly for 15, 16, 17, and 2018? Four years or three and a half On years? Average, on, for those three years, I would say that we would have had 12 months, probably about six, seven, seven meetings, eight. And reason being that every time you want to have a monthly meeting, chances are that X number of person managers are on vacation. So you will end up having a meeting, either on vacation or, or on sick leave for whatever reason. You ever end up having a meeting with about two or three managers, which to me was pointless. So you'd have had probably a minimum, approximately so, about six or seven meetings per eight, year. Or eight for the year, yeah. Per year. Not to say that we, I was not always in constant contact with the managers on a daily, weekly basis. If there's an emergency, of course I have a meeting. But to have it a standard meeting with all the managers, say, probably it. And do, those meetings obviously would have, doc, would have had documented minutes. Yes, they would, because at that time, and during that time, once again, using my management style, I found that having a, a monthly meeting with the general manager chairing the meeting, to me, I needed to empower my managers and have, give them more autonomy. And in doing that, I decided that we would have each manager from each department chair a meeting. Of course, I was always present at all of the meetings. And as such, the manager would have, the respective manager would have his or her secretary take the minutes for the meeting. And the meeting, the following meeting, those minutes would be sent out to the various managers through the secretary of the person who would have had the meeting previously, and we would copy the minutes and make any 
any um, corrections during the meeting. And so each manager's secretary then would have copies of the minutes on their computer. And they would have been compiled and stored in a specific place? The manager would keep the, the manager for the respective department would keep the minutes. Mostly we didn't, we didn't print the minutes the, um, for, what should I say? The, yeah, the respective manager for each department would have the minutes. Yes, a we'll copy have, of the minutes. Would we'll have a copy. A copy of the of minutes, either hard copy or soft copy. And the general manager would have, of course. I would have had, would have had a copy, but honestly speaking, I would take the, the minutes, the copy that I have, I would take to the following meeting, make any notes I want to make, and that was it. Okay. I'm asking that because we requested copies of the minutes, and in 2015, we could only get minutes for four meetings. Mm -mm. The respective managers, secretaries would have the minutes, soft and hard. In 2016, we got copies of minutes for seven meetings, mm -hmm. which is pretty much in keeping with what you said, perhaps a minimum of six or seven in any given year. In 2017, only three. The minutes of only three meetings made available mm -hmm. to us, and in 2018, only three. And um, it was said to this committee that the minutes could not be found. Copies of these minutes could not be found. Well, I won't be able to answer that for you because you I know that all the secretaries, the, the respective secretaries for the managers would have me to so have So you're the saying minutes. that it, it should not have been a difficult matter for Correct. these mi minutes to be, to be located, located at the transport board and provided Correct. to the, but they were not. And the now manager, I think he's still the manager, uh, insisted Martin? that he could, he could find no more than this. And Miss, uh, is it Scatlin? Is it Miss Catlin? Uh, Miss Catwell, Catwell, the board secretary. Yeah, at, yeah she that could time. find no more copies other than those which she furnished. I know he left them there. You left and them there. And they should have them, yes. Okay. And they should be there, though. And they should be there. And if they're not there, they can't respond. You left in 2018? Yes. Why, why did you leave in 2018? That's retirement. Pardon me? Why did you leave in 2018? Why? Yeah. I retired. Retirement, okay. Happy retirement. Second, thanks. Right. Enjoying it to the fullest. All right. Um, during um, interview of Miss Sue, mm -hmm. Minister Jordan asked some <laughs> pretty uh, pertinent questions because Miss Sue was expressing um, her concern over various important matters mm -hmm. in the operational setup at the transport board, uh, bills being produced um, for work, monies being requested without proper documentation, the use of a system which had become a bit outdated for transport board purposes, improper use of the magneto, is it magneto? Or magneto, 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 magneto mm -hmm. uh, system. Mm -hmm. And she was also um, saying to the committee that, in fact, she was removed from a position of responsibility for stores and for beyond stores, I think it has something to do with statistics. You, you aware of that? Do you want me to start with the last question first? Uh, well, you start where you want to start. Go ahead. Okay, um, to my knowledge, um, the financial controller, Margaret Felicia Sue, never wrote to me about, or informed me about her concerns as far as, as it pertained to the Magneto system. Um, yes, she, when I went to the transport board, the financial controller, Margaret Felicia Sue, she was responsible for statistics department. She was responsible for the finance department. She was responsible for and finance revenue. The revenue department was connected to the finance. She was also responsible for the stores department. Um, what else? I think that was about it. And 
to my mind, being the financial controller and responsible for, yeah, it was statistics and revenue, right? And responsible for statistics. The statistics department is a department where the cash taken in from drivers, they're, they're reconciled, the cash that's taken in on a manual, manually. And she was also responsible for the revenue department where the cash was going into. So to my mind, I thought that we should have a, there should have been a, what I call separation of duties, if you want to call it that. Because I didn't think that for audit purposes that she should have been in charge of revenue and statistics. To me, that was a conflict of interest. And why I took the stores area from under her, um, from her, from her being responsible for stores is because every year we do an inventory of the, we, we conduct an audit on the inventory and we're supposed to do what, what, to my, what I would call in, in my own banking language, a surprise audit of the inventory. And I also think that if she was in charge of the inventory and she was the one also conducting the audit of the inventory. To me, that was a no-no. So right. that's why I separated those two departments from her management. All right, she did indicate to the committee, Ms. Sue, that is, when she was here, that in fact, she did write to you about her concerns about the Magneto system. I have no recollection of that. Uh, that, is, that was her. Um, and when she was uh, asked as to why she thought she was removed from um, being in charge of stores, et cetera, um, she gave two reasons. Um, because she felt that her constant and repeated writing of concerns to persons like yourself was proving to be problematic and objectionable. objectionable and therefore, she was removed. She also said, um, second reason I had at that time was the store supervisor. The main person at that time was the husband of the accountant. Now, what, what, what in the world do you understand her to mean by that? I, I don't understand. I, don't, I can't speak for uh, yeah. Felicia Sue. And I no, no, I I'm, not asking you to, I'm not asking you to speak for her. If you were to hear her say that, what would you understand by that? About the has about the yeah the second reason why I was removed is because the store supervisor the main person at the time was the husband of the accountant. Sir, all respects, I really don't I don't know. All right, um, I don't know. Uh, okay. I don't know. Um, There's something working here. For she said enough to this committee, Miss um, Ford. Mm -hmm to evoke or provoke this comment from Minister Jordan. Where I come from, they may call it stealing or thiefing, but I understand the reason why you put it that way. Ms. Sue was laying some heavy charges against the management, uh, really operations at the transport board with respect to how things were accounted for, how matters of concern addressed by her as the financial controller were being responded to and addressed. And she was being very negative in her language with respect to her view as to why things were happening the way they were happening. The language strongly suggests that she felt that there was dishonesty at the transport board and her constant repeated reference to some of her concerns as the financial control and making people uncomfortable. And therefore, um, what resulted was a shifting of her from responsibility for certain mm -hmm. things and a lack of response to those letters of concern which she addressed to the quality mm -hmm. assurance manager, which she addressed to yourself, which she raised at management meetings. What did she raise at management meetings again concerning the quality assurance manager? Did she say? She raised all kinds of things. At, according to her, she wrote on all kinds of matters. Invoices, the question of over invoicing, the question of repeated invoices, the question of bills, or receipts submitted for work, 
work not being done, all kinds of things she is said to have raised in correspondence with the board and with the general manager and the quality assurance manager. Do you have copies of the correspondence that we, I can see? We have copies of some of those correspondence which, can we, I can see them, please? which we can share with you. Do you have anything that you can say, uh, Ms. Ford, to us that would I give? I, I, have cars, I have something pertain, as it pertains to her, um, her duties being shifted, which she says she knew nothing about. You just give me a few minutes, a few more sorry, minutes. Sorry. Thank you. Mr. Chair? Yes. Okay. I have a copy of a, an email which I sent to Felicia Sue on the 2nd of February 2016. And it relates to an audit, audit that we had done of canisters of the buses because we do that periodically. However, um, Ms. Sue's response to me, she said, as FC, I have conducted an audit on the stores departments. I discussed my findings with Mr. Rowe the same evening on Sunday, January the 10th, 2016, and with Mr. Codrington the following day on 
Monday, January the 11th, 2016. Sorry, that was a surprise audit of the inventory in stores department that I had requested that she carry out. She goes, it, the email goes on to say, as stores is no longer under my direct authority, I respectfully suggest that the onus would be on the head of the that department, the quality assurance manager, to provide the necessary justification for the substantial variances. You, this is important to note, Chair, you may recall that stores was removed from my responsibility simply because it was felt that as FC, it was inappropriate for me to be responsible for stores conducting the audit and providing justification. It is for this exact reason that this section was removed from my purview. All right, thank you for that. Um, there are several matters on which Ms. Sue said that she had written. Um, she did insist, uh, she wrote about the Magneto system. She insisted that she wrote with reference to reconditioned transmissions. And not only did she write, she mentioned it several times at management meetings. Um, she wrote about the fact that practices or protocols which had been put in place in several respects um, were not applied. Practices which should have been adopted were not being adopted or pursued. I am not at all aware of any ratings received from the financial controller. She said she wrote about um, stock stock-related issues. She wrote about oil usage, excess oil usage. That is quite untrue, and I would say that, and you could put that in a minute, it is untrue. You're saying that what she said to this committee is not true? What she said she sent me was untrue. All right. I don't know about the other things she might have said, but I can tell you about that one. Things she said to the committee in relation to correspondence with you those things are not true. No. Concerns about, serious concerns about monies that were being spent on repairs and maintenance for buses, especially not seeing the results to an agreement in the amount that we were spending, etc. I wrote, expressed no, my chair. concerns at one point, wrote the general manager, even about productivity. Even about? Productivity. Did she have a right to you with respect to the practice of checks being issued and dispensed for acquisition of services or supplies which had nothing to do with the operations at the transport board? No. So as she told so us So do you have those, do you have copies of those memos? That's, that's what us, I need to know. If she told us that, that would be incorrect as well? Yes. Did you ever have any concern at any time about the issue of any particular check or checks? Ms. Sue, res Ms. Sue responded, I would say yes. Do you have any documentation where this is highlighted? I wrote again about the matter, yes, sir. Mm -mm. She had some, some concerns as well about checks being issued to the chairman of the board for purchases which the chairman made apparently or allegedly in the interest of the board. That would have to be um, the special project and for each time, each time the chairman, and it all um, pertains to the same when he used his credit card. Those, those were all wrapped on each, I got all the receipts send them to her with memos, and I have copies of all the memos that I sent to her. All right, um, let's deal with Asking her to check, ensure that everything is correct, and if she's satisfied, then she can sign off on it. If she has any problems, then she could have referred the matter to me. All right, um, let's deal with a couple of old matters that we'd like to get your 
um, perspective on any knowledge of the missing bus, BM506? I know nothing about BM506. Nothing at all about BM506? Absolutely nothing. It, it, it went missing before or subsequent to your tenure? I don't, I, I just said I know nothing about BM506. Nothing at all. So I don't know if it went, if it went missing. And so you that don't know would be, BM506, it would be the, it would be the shell of the of BM for that is right, but what do you want to tell us that you know nothing about it? I know it? nothing about it, no. But you're nothing. saying it would be the shell. It, you're saying okay, you a don't bus know does it, not go a shell. bus doesn't go missing. If buses when buses are written out of record, we first have to write the Ministry of Transport and Works, take the buses up there and have them or they come down to our workplace and ensure that the buses can be written out of records. After that is done, and we give them a list of buses for them to check. After that is done, and we get approval from them, then we have to go to the Ministry of Finance to get approval to board the buses. And as I've said before, I know nothing about BM506. As far as I'm concerned, BM506 would have been a bus on the board. If it is that it was sold, we only sell shells, you, not a bus. You, you, you had heard prayer to the last moment you had heard prayer to just know that it was missing and it wasn't accounted for? In the, I saw it in the um, Art of General report. The Art of General's report. Yeah. And you were not part of any transaction by which mm. the shell of BM506 was sold to Mr. Catlin or any other purchaser? No, sir. Okay. So you were as much mystified by the whereabouts as BM506 as we are. And the other general is. And the other general is. Mm -hmm. Any statement you want to make to us about the matter of over invoicing, over payment for repair transaction? I can't make any statement on that, on those, no. The if other you general, have questions. The so. other general suggested that there were instances of over invoicing. Mm -hmm. Over invoicing yes. relative to repairs. You, you know nothing about that? No. Not until I saw it in the Auditor General's report. Okay. And the matter of acquisition of reconditioned transmissions, mm -hmm. you're not? That was, a, that was a, an activity, if you want to call it that, that was approved by the Board of Directors that we purchased the reconditioned transmissions from a company, I think it's ATS or AST. That's a local company or no, overseas company? No, overseas in, this, in the States. But we were led to the opinion that... Uh, 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 ah, no, not APCO. It was ATS or ASD. We were led to the opinion that the reconditioned transmissions were preferably sourced locally as opposed I, to cheaper, um, cheaper availability from overseas. We were led to believe uh -huh. that the board had an opportunity to purchase um, reconditioned transmissions from overseas at a far cheaper price than available locally, but yet, yes. yet a policy and practice of, of acquiring them locally was pursued. No, not since when we got from Mr. And it was Mr. Bartholomew, the fleet management consultant, who gave us the connection with the um, ATS company in United States. Because apparently they and he used to he was the deputy manager of um, the transport system in transport company in Trinidad, and we got the connection or the, the the referral from him about this company, and he was the one who helped us more or less to get the the reconditioned um, transmissions from that company at a lower price. But I'm not aware of the fact that we could have gotten look, um, reconditioned transmissions locally. Well, that's a mistake. That we, never came to us, well, not never came to my attention. Well, that's a mistake in the committee, and members could correct me if I'm wrong. The committee would have been told that you did have the opportunity to acquire transmissions from overseas at a cheaper price, mm -hmm. but that you were forced to acquire them locally because if you acquired them from overseas at that cheaper price, you had to pay a cash which you did not have. No, at that time, we had, 
at the time it was 2016. We, that's why we purchased them in batches of 10. And it was, it was cheaper to purchase those reconditioned transmissions in batches of 10 than it was to buy a one new transmission in Barbados. But, but that is what we were made to understand. But further, we were made to understand that the choice, in spite of that, the choice was made to acquire them locally because if you, if you sourced them overseas, you had to pay cash. I, I don't know. I'm not familiar with that. Okay. Well, you, would have been, you would have been intimately knowledgeable of those issues as the general manager? I should be, yes as I was with the reconditioned transmissions that were purchased from overseas. Okay. And with the reconditioned transmissions, we were given 30 days within which you can pay for them. Were you happy with the service that you were getting from, uh, what's the name of the company, Transtech, is it? Mr. Braffwit? As far as you know, was the transport board, um, happy with the service you were getting from Transtech. Was there anything about the relationship with, Mr. Trans, with, with Transtech that concerned you or displeased you? Is it Transtech? What I can honestly say is that the, the, as I've been saying before, honestly, the owner of Transtech never liked to have conversations with me. The general manager? Mm -hmm. He never, he said he, he didn't like to deal with me, so. He dealt with the quality assurance manager. Mr. Codrington. Yes. I knew Mr. Brathwaite in well, my previous form, life. Did you form? Work life. Okay, did you form any opinion as to the contractual arrangements between Transport Board and Transtech re repairs? I came and found it and no. But you chaired the management meetings and you attended the board meetings. Yes. There was never any issue raised with respect to the quality of service um, yeah, provided by Transtech and the reason no. for the repeated repairs of uh, certain vehicles? No. It was never discussed? No. Not to my own, no. Um, let me just refresh your memory, Ms. Ford. In the special audit um, prepared by the Auditor General mm -hmm. at 211, it said that it was observed that during the period 2015 to 2018, the board was obtaining reconditioned transmissions from a local supplier with the lowest cost being $22,460 per unit. During the period 2015 to 2018? That's what mm -hmm. you said? Yes, mm. 2015 to 2018. Having been informed in July 2014 of reconditioned Allison transmissions costing $5,576. This is page 13. Exclusive of shipping from a company in the United States, the board subsequently commenced purchasing transmissions from this supplier. Payment of 50% of the cost of the first shipment was made in November 2014. Subsequently, the supplier offered a rebate in return for all transmissions. The board's records show that 45 reconditioned transmissions were paid for from this overseas supplier between November 2014 and May 2018. It then goes on to say at 212, from March 2015 until May 2018, during the same period, information seen indicates that the local supplier installed at least 123 transmissions for the transport board. That's the same period. And when it, the total cost was $2.8 million, Based on the payment of the first 10 transmissions obtained from the first supplier in the United States, one transmission purchase cost approximately 6,396. 
Therefore, if the same amount of reconditioned transmissions were purchased from this overseas supplier, the cost would have been cheaper by approximately $2 million. The savings would be even higher since this analysis is based on the original cost of the transmission. The board's personnel indicated that the lack of funds prevented the purchase of more reconditioned transmissions from this overseas supplier who had to be paid in cash, unlike the local supplier who offered a credit facility. I would not say the local supplier offer a credit facility. The cre a credit facility was offered by only one supplier. I think that sh it, what the, the board personnel should have said instead is that we paid, payment was delayed to this particular supplier. They didn't have a credit facility. So, so that's misleading. How do you account? then for the determination to take 123 transmissions at an additional cost of $2 million when the overseas transmissions were available and would have cost the board $800,000. I can't speak to you about that as a person who's mechanically knowledgeable. But what I can say is that if you're going to, we have, uh, let's say, 150 buses in transport um, that are workable at that point in time. And then we're ordering the transmissions in tranches of 10. The transmissions, and I'm just speaking logically, I'm just thinking, oh, I'm not, once again, I'm not speaking as a person who's familiar with uh, mechanics or engineering of any vehicle. And if it is you're buying the, the transmissions in batches of 10, and we only started buying these transmissions from, I think it was 2014, 2015. It takes a while for the transmissions to get from the company in the States to Barbados. So I do believe that in, during that period and the bus needs a transmission and we need to put buses on the road, to me logically thinking you have to use the local supplier. Secondly, when the transmissions come, the reconditioned transmissions come and they're fitted into the buses, in order for us to get the rebate, we have to wait until each trans reconditioned transmission has been fitted in the bus and then we say I'm at the 10, all transmissions, they have to be packed, shipped, and everything. So that's another lapse in period. So to me, you would need to get, if you need to get buses on the road, you would need to utilize the, the local supplier, not that you're, you're utilizing them because of any other reason, but to me, that, that's, that's the logical reason. My concern with that is that as a manager, if you have cash difficulties and you have a differential of between 22 and 6,000, that's about what? $16,000 difference in the cost of transmission. Then I would, as a manager, you would need to undertake to speak to the Ministry of Finance to demonstrate that money could be saved, significant sums, because those are not small sums, significant sums could be saved by being able to get a lump sum to bring in the transmissions, not just 10 at a time. Could you share with us what steps you would have taken in looking at these figures to try to rectify a situation where you ended up purchasing only 45 at the lower price of about 6,000 to purchasing 123 at the price of 22,000. Who authorized the um, purchases? Which purchases? 
the transmissions? Who determines where you buy transmissions from? The fact about going to the ministry and, and calling the ministry and preparing, preparing um, writing to go to the ministry about transmissions is very well said. But the actual action and in order to, it isn't done like that, I'm sure you will be familiar with the process. It's not that easy, it's not that simple. If it were that simple, surely we would have done that. Um, we don't what were the purchase purchase transmissions from the, the individual, the bus will go to the, well if you want to say purchase if it's written in the invoice, the, in, the bus would go to the respective um, service provider and they would, if the transmission is done and they need a new transmission, the person would install the transmission. So was any attempt made to make a presentation uh, either via yourself as general manager or the chairman of the board to the Ministry of Transport and Works because after all the Ministry of Transport and Works would be the entity that would be giving you government money to keep the transport board running. Did you take any steps to put a position to them as to how savings could have been realized by being able to purchase from the overseas supplier? On December the 31st, 2015, a position was put to the Ministry of Finance regarding the, the purchase of um, parts, tools, payment of creditors to, wait, a, a, a paper, a board paper was presented to the Ministry of Finance regarding that, December 2015. December which will encompass everything. And you're saying that the Ministry of Finance, on being presented with the argument of the savings that could be made from purchasing the transmissions overseas. Not only transmissions, they, all other um, parts. That they, in looking at that argument, decided in favor of not forwarding the money, but sticking with the local supplier? I didn't say that. I, we asked for a million dollars and we got $982,000 as, as is recorded in the, um, the paper that was done. And this went on the then. Sorry, the approval that was given by the. And, and this went on then for three years. Which Between this? 2015 to 2018. What went on for three years? The, the purchases were made between 2015 and mm -hmm. 2018. You said that in 2015, you were refused you the million dollars that you had requested. I received 982,000 instead. So you were just 100,000 short? Approximately. Okay, and uh, why, were, why were those monies not put towards the transmission so that you could realize the savings? Who determined that you would Transmissions were not the only thing that, that those funds covered. They covered payment to outstanding local creditors too. So how much of the monies requested pertain to transmissions? I really can't tell you that. I don't recall. And therefore, on the following year, did you make another attempt to deal with this issue because you would have been losing... In 2017? 2017? 2016? 2017? 2018? No. Even if we had, we would have written to the Ministry of Finance, we have written to the Ministry of Transport and Works, as I've said before, for funds to assist with the purchase of, for funds to assist with the purchase of parts, payment of creditors, etc. We would always wrote to those two ministries, but we did not specify to buy transmissions or no. 
So the issue of rectifying the purchase of transmissions did not figure largely in your presentation to either ministries? It would have been part of it, but it would not have been highlighted. So they were not given the opportunity to recognize then the tremendous savings that could have been um, achieved by bringing transmissions from overseas? The board of directors, they were given the opportunity to see that there would have been savings by purchasing the transmissions from overseas. So the decision was made by the board. What, what position did you put to the board in relation to this matter? It was a board paper. You have a copy of it? No, I don't. Okay. And what did the board say in relation to your presentation? They agreed with the purchase of the reconditioned transmissions. That was early in 2015. And it continued. You bought during that period 123 from the local supplier versus 45 from the overseas supplier. Between that period, 2015 to 2018, according the records, to the Auditor General. Yeah, the records show that. Hmm? The records show that. Yes. So what was the board's position about the fact that you were still purchasing from the overseas from the domestic supplier rather than the overseas supplier? Did they direct you to continue taking from the domestic supplier? I must say that the transmissions from the domestic supplier were reduced significantly, the purchase of transmissions according to you. When you say reduced, do you mean in number or price? I think they both go hand in hand. That was not reflected here. I don't no, know I if the Auditor General could it. speak to this, but based on what the Auditor General has here, the lowest cost for a transmission was $22,000. And therefore, at no time during the period 2015 to 2018, did the board ever experience any reduction or rebate on the purchase of those 123 transmissions. So my question is, who made the determination? Were you instructed by the board to continue as usual? Who made the determination that you would continue with the local transmissions when the overseas transmissions were available? When the funds were depleted, as far as we're concerned, for the purchase of the transmissions from overseas, we had no other alternative but to continue using the local supplier, whoever it may be. So the 900000 was to last you for three years? Or? I'm not so sure. They didn't give you a time frame. Mm -hmm. We weren't given a time frame as to how long it was supposed to last. And therefore, when you produced your estimates um, each year, did you put in to get transmissions from the United States at the lower price, or did you make provision for the higher cost transmissions? Where because the esti your estimates, your budget requests would have to reflect what you're going to buy and what would be the approximate cost. Not necessarily so. What we did, we would um, provide a figure for re repairs and maintenance, never a figure for purchases as such, and that was all lumped together in the, the, the bottom line, if you want to call it, for repairs and maintenance. That seems a little unusual to me. Um, if you are planning for an organization, whether government, private, doesn't matter, if you are putting forward a request for funds to be able to run the organization, then your costs are made up of how much you anticipate you're going to buy in that year and how much it will actually cost. And that's how you arrive at the figure. What you are suggesting is that a figure is pulled out of the air and dropped in estimates without reference to what you're going to buy mm -hmm. and how much you're going to pay for it. It's not pulled out of the air. Okay. Um, conversation is held with the financial controller and the respective department heads as to what they will be doing during the course of the year or what they plan to do. 
So provision would have been made to purchase the $22,000 transmission then? Pardon me? When you were estimating how many transmissions you were going to provide for, seeing that you had an aging fleet, seeing that you had a fleet that was constantly getting new transmissions for the same vehicle, four within the space of about two years, and most transmissions I know can last sometimes as long as the, the vehicle itself. I don't agree. <laughs> well, they certainly would not be destroyed within a year. Once again, I would reiterate, I am not a mechanic, and I would be answering these questions just on logic. I, I, I really, so the, the way how you are going down and asking about transmit, I can't respond to that. I think the person for you to speak to about that would be in the quality assurance manager in conjunction with myself. Right, so the question I'm asking, the preparation of the budget that would have to be submitted to the Ministry of Transport and Works to get funds, you would have to make provision for the items that you need to make the organization run well. With the high level of transmissions that were being changed so frequently and at so high a cost, what provisions were made within your budget for the purchase of transmissions did you make provision for the ones bought overseas or was provision made for the ones bought locally? Once again, it was done based on repairs and maintenance. But which figure did you all use to calculate? I really can't remember. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, you're, Minister. You're welcome. Uh, husbands, Mrs. Jordan. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, Thank you, Ms. Ford, for coming. I, something um, I heard in an earlier intervention, this question or the response had to do with management meetings. Mm -hmm. The question had to do with the cost of transmissions. It had to do with the frequency of repairs to particular units. Um, so I just want to be reminded did I hear that the management meetings, these kind, that kind of information mm -hmm. did not come up at management meetings? As to how often the... That there were like particular the, the units that were um, no. repeatedly being repaired? No. That, that didn't come? Okay. No. no the, the reason why I asked that, why I said everybody who I speak to, I'm, I'm not... I don't ask strict questions, so this, this is just strict questions. Mm -hmm. It has to do with governance and the, the purpose and the use of management meetings, because I, I take it that management meetings are meetings that are intended to ensure, that somebody used the term earlier, operational efficiency, that what is happening on a day-to-day -day basis, they're not board meetings, mm -hmm. they refer to the day-to-day -day running of the business of the organization. What I heard afterward was that in determining what information was sent to the Ministry of Transport and Works and the Ministry of Finance, mm -hmm. and this is in relation to supplementary, I think that was mm -hmm. the term that I heard, I understand that information was put together to well, populate the document that would have been sent. The document, from what I heard, would speak to the fact that you needed a certain amount of money to spend in, in particular areas. My question is, in the management meetings, irrespective of who would have chaired the management meetings, mm -hmm. what kind of information did the management team receive from finance? that allowed you to be able, that allowed you as GM, but also you, the rest of the management team, mm -hmm. to be able to make the decisions that would lend themselves to an efficient operation? At the management meetings, when it's time for the, around the time when the estimates are 
supposed to be discussed with the respective Ministry, Ministry of Transport and, and Works, and then by extension, the Ministry of Finance. Prior to those meetings, I mean, we have our management. First, the financial controller would go, as I said before, would go to each manager and find out what's going on. Let's take, for instance, in particular, operations department, which is the department that's resp responsible for the buses being on the road. We would, f um, the financial controller would find out, well, how many, bus how many buses do you think you will need to, for the year to bring in X amount of money? And she, in turn, would, we would, two of them would sit down together and calculate what they think they would need how many buses they think they would need on the road, then that information is, the financial controller takes that and she calculates the projected revenue. And then at the board meeting, at the management meeting, we sit down and we discuss exactly what each manager would have said and, and agreed to the figure that we should put in the estimates. All right, thank you very much. So that speaks to the process for preparing the estimates. estimates yeah. Now, management meetings, other than management meetings that spoke to estimate preparation, mm -hmm. what kind of information did you get from the financial controller? In other words, when you're getting management information, financial information that is designed for management use. Mm -hmm. What kind of information did you get if you weren't getting information that said or that would suggest to you these units are a problem? We're spending money on these all the time and I'm not sure what is going on. Um, we need to do something about it. If you're not getting that kind of information, what kind of information were you getting that would have been useful in managing the operation? At the management meeting from the financial controllers and or from the accounting end, you just know things like, we don't have any money. I said, what? we don't have any money. Yeah, I will come to that. We don't have any money and this is what we need to do, but we have no money to get this and we need to go to the Ministry of Finance to get some funds. The quality assurance manager, he would then say, he would note that X amount of buses are defective and this is what has to be done, but they're working on getting parts from the stores department and ultimately from the service providers to fix the respective buses that need to be fixed that he think can be fixed without costing the board uh, a very high amount of funds to be fixed. We would get information from the human resources department as far as it relates to any outstanding dis um, discipline, disciplinary matters, anything to do with the Barbados Workers Union, if you have any outstanding matters with them. And from the operations department, we would know that um, the manager there would tell us any new routes that she might be looking at where the, the routes that may be bringing in, the lucrative routes that we can use, um, any concerns she might have with the private service vehicles. And basically that's it, except for marketing. Okay, so what I'm hearing you to say is that the focus was well, really in two areas. One is that you don't have any money. Uh -huh. um, so. What I heard you to say was that that seemed to have been what is referred to as a refrain. Yes. That you heard it all the time, every time, that there is no money. And I am also hearing you to say that, well, the suggestion that I'm getting from you is that the focus seemed to be on revenue because you spoke to um, the amount of money coming in. Mm -hmm. You also spoke most recently to the, the matter of the routes mm -hmm. that could be considered lucrative. Mm -hmm. And you sounded as though you were also speaking to 
competition mm -hmm. from public service, privately owned public service vehicles. Mm -hmm. Now, did the management team focus in any rigorous way on the cost side? Because the bottom line is made up of a top line mm -hmm. and the lines underneath the top line and those lines under the top line are cost lines, mm -hmm. whether direct overhead costs or then um, other variable costs. Mm -hmm. So w was there any focus on costs, any, any rigorous attention being paid to the costs in the operation? Particularly in the <coughs> repairs and maintenance of the vehicles. And it was as a result of that that we engage the services of the fleet management consultant. Okay, so you say there was focus on repairs and maintenance. The quality assurance area, yeah. Right. Now, that focus, are, are you suggesting that that focus did not include an issue such as the fact that a unit or particular units just seem very problematic. Because you're talking about repairs and maintenance, which includes maintenance of the units, the buses, and there are some of those units that are problematic to the organization, being repaired over and over and over, and then you still have to repair them again but you're saying that that information did not come to the management meeting. What, what information came to the management meeting in relation to, and it is not, I'm not talking about specific, but generally speaking, what kind of information came in relation to repairs and maintenance? Was it information that would allow you to make a decision on units, or was it global information that says repairs and maintenance costs are high? It was both. <coughs> it was both. When I, a couple of years after joining, and not, not during the period under review now, but a couple of years after joining the institution, there were some units that were problematic and we found that we were repairing them constantly for different things. And it was more to repair those units than it would have been if we had looked at purchasing a bus, to be frank. And those units, we asked that they be viewed by the Ministry of um, Transport and Works and eventually boarded. And there were a number of units like that. I don't remember the amount. And going now to, fast forward now to 2015-18, when you say units that were repaired over and over, I'm sure you're referring to these four units in here that are four or six units in here that were mentioned by the Auditor General. Are you? Sorry? No. When you say these units that had to be repaired over and over for the same thing, are you referring to these units that are mentioned on page 20? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're examining. Because I really don't we're look examining at, the Auditor General's report. Right, but I so, don't look at bus numbers. When, when we're no, signing no, I'm, off I'm on checks. Asking, I, but I'm not asking oh. of you. I'm not asking if you did. I'm asking about the financial controller. Because the financial controller is one of the persons, maybe the principal mm. person, who has an, or is supposed to have an eagle eye on costs and on revenue, the, the, the numbers, the financial things. So my question to you had to do with what information came from the, your finance people, those who you relied on mm -hmm. to give you financial information and who you would have re relied on to interrogate the financial information and give you something that you could make a decision with as GM. I don't expect you to be the financial controller. You have a financial controller. My question is, given that there are units identified, that was my original question, mm -hmm. did that come to the management meeting? Were you in possession of information that would allow you to make a decision on those units highlighted? Surely not these, nor any other. 
I'm, I'm also hearing you to say now that you're saying after the period covered by the audit, they began to be a focus on some, well, you, you began to analyze information that suggested to you it would sometimes be less costly to buy a new bus than to repair some of the buses based on the information that you were receiving. But you said it was after. No, not after. No, it would be after. after I joined the organization, probably two, two years or so after. Prior to the first retrenchment, and the first retrenchment was in 2014, because at that time we were we, we had we were really really delving into to, to costs and what's going on in the organization, as far as the repairs and maintenance is concerned, because that figure was extremely high. All right, I'm a little bit confused. Let me ask a question: Was the the financial controller at that time? the same as the financial controller who did not share that there were particular units that were problematic? The information I'm referring to came from the quality assurance manager, not the financial controller. Okay, so the quality assurance manager was the one was who the was one? highlighting the, yes. the, the challenges? Yes. Okay. Um, the, the financial controller at the time, the, the financial controller I don't, want to, I don't want to ask a too strange a question. But let me ask it the way it just came to my mind. Okay. Did the financial controller add any value to the management meeting in relation to giving advice on how the transport board should deal with, this, with, with these matters? No. Mm. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Sure. Thank you. And for the query, Senator Nurse, Senator Driggs. None from me, Chair, at the moment. Thank you, Senator Nurse. Mr. Trotman, from your side. No. Okay. Uh, Mr. Husband. I think um, Minister Colin Jordan uh, helped to clarify and bring certain things into perspective. Um, yes, his question was very, was excellent <laughs> and so, on point. So he identified that in the management meetings that it was the quality assurance person who um, brought to the attention of the management meeting the high costs that were going on in terms of parts and maintenance and repairs. He was able to identify that the financial controller did not necessarily add value to the analysis of this particular situation. During the same period that we are discussing, we understand that they would have secured the services of a consultant because this problem of maintenance, repairs, and keeping the buses on the road, and the high costs were a particular issue, and the idea is that the consultant will help the board to rectify the problem. So therefore, one would be able to assume then that keen attention was being paid to the issue of repairs, maintenance, costs, because it was highlighted and a consultant was hired to try to help you deal with that situation. Would that be a fair thing to say that this now was the focus of attention of the board when you had the consultant on board and he? Correct. Good. So on the issue then of how to deal with the matter of the cost of the transmissions and which transmissions were bought, who made the determination to continue with the local transmissions versus the I think I explained that already, Ms. Husbands. In terms of, no, I, no I'm asking who made the determination. Was it the quality assurance controller? Was it the board? 
Was it the financial controller? The quality insurance manager is in charge of repairs and maintenance of the board's buses. And if it is that you need, there's a bus that needs a transmission and one is not readily available, the reconditioned one's not readily available, but then he or the quality assurance officer, particularly if they need to get the bus back on the road um, in a quick manner, would decide which service provider they would send the bus to. So when you all were discussing and watching and uh, monitoring the progress of the board in that situation, the agreement then around the table was that you would continue with the local transmissions as opposed to the overseas transmissions. That was not discussed at the, the um, management meeting. So the determination was made by the quality assurance on its own then? That's his job. And when you were looking back at the expenses and the cost and so on, as general manager, you never brought up a discussion with him to account for the decision that was being made as it was impacting the cost of the operations? With the hiring of the fleet management consultant, as I think I've said before, repairs and maintenance was the cost of repairs and maintenance were reduced. No, we're talking about the, the one of the, the, we did see a reduction in some of the parts, but there was no reduction with regards to the transmissions, which were the higher costs that y'all were. The transmissions are not, sorry. they are not an, uh, an accounting line in the expenses, as repairs and maintenance. So it would not be separated. Yes. And therefore, when you were looking at the cost, because you said that this was a problem, the maintenance, and the cost, and it was the focus of the team when you had the consultant brought in, and therefore, this was where the central concern was. So I what, was, what is where the central concern was? The transmissions? The issue of the cost of repairs of oh. which the transmissions was probably one of the biggest costs you had. Transmissions, engines. Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. So you're saying that in your discussions, the team did not make the determination as to what would happen in relation to where you would get transmissions, that the quality assurance manager made this on his own. He was the one responsible for the department. So he made the decision on his own? Yeah. He would have made the decision where the transmissions would where the buses would go for transmissions to be fixed. It could go to one or two service providers. And he would not have to account to you or to the financial controller over that decision when it impacted the cost. It's either one or two, one or two service providers or they were done, since the fleet management consultant came in, the transmissions were repaired at the board, at Mangrove. Okay, so we can conclude then that the quality assurance manager was the person who made that determination and there was no consultation with you all in relation to the cost as it affected the cost of repairs and maintenance. The quality assurance manager made decisions for the buses to be repaired by service providers. Right, and he didn't have to consult with you and you did not ask about it when it affected the cost? You when what affected the cost? The cost of the transmissions. Once again, I will reiterate that the quality insurance manager is responsible for his department and sending the various buses to whichever service provider. However, the overall responsibility for the transport board would have been yours. And so I'm ask, I was just asking if this was a decision he could make on his own without reference to you. This is a decision that you did not question or ask for an explanation as to what was happening. It was never brought out. out. It was never, transmissions, the cost of transmissions was never pulled out of the actual cost for repairs and maintenance. And it wasn't a discussion 
um, at, at management meetings as such. Only when we actually, when the fleet management consultant indicated that he can get transmissions cheaper. So it did come And out. I came into the organization with that, those particular um, service providers fixing transmissions. Right. So it did come up. The consultant, the fleet consultant did bring it up. Before he was, to yeah. Be, okay, continue, sorry about that. Hmm? Continue. You were saying something as I interrupted you, sorry. No, that's all right. No, I was saying that it was brought up, but you're saying it was brought up by the fleet consultant. In other words, it was highlighted as an issue at a management meeting. Otherwise, he, he would not have the, suggested a change. The fleet management consultant, prior to being titled the fleet management consultant, a bit prior to being a consultant on the board, he had visited the transport board, I think it was back in 1990 some, that's how we met him. And he realized that we were having challenges for, with the transmissions and engines way back then. And when he came here then, they, we consulted him actually, I think it was the chairman who consulted him because he had heard about him through the operations manager. And he then, he's the one then who said, well, this happens in Trinidad. We also have similar problems. And this is the company that we can use because they're very expensive um, at the domestic level in Trinidad too. Mm -hmm. And that's how he came in. And, uh, but it wasn't done when he was the fleet management consultant. Oh, I mean, you didn't purchase. None were purchased while he, well, was, while no. he was there. OK, thank you. Thank I you. think he started um, in 20, 2016, I think it was 2016. But we were having conversations with him before he actually got the title as fleet management consultant. Thank you, Minister Husbands. Um, Ms. Ford, were, were you happy with the recruitment of Mr. Bartholomew the, to deal with fleet issues? And, yes. Um, and his performance? Yes. You were involved in his recruitment? In to some extent. Do you want to clarify for me, please? In that I am the one who would have sent the email to his um, boss then in Trinidad on the behalf of the board of directors saying that we are interested in um, recruit, recruiting him as a, to work with us for a period of time. But of course that was after the board of directors had given the approval. Uh, were you happy with the relationship between Mr. Bartholomew and the quality assurance manager and the quality assurance department? My understanding that the personalities clash. Well, personalities can clash, but you can still operate even in that context in the interest of the, the organization. Were you satisfied that the working relationship was? was no. No. Okay. All right. You, know, you said you know nothing about the arrangements with trans with Transtech. You weren't involved. I came upon that, no. You weren't involved in that, and he had no dealings um, with you. And you said that Miss Sue did not tell you anything uh, in writing related to procedures check issues, invoicing issues, accounting issues, et cetera. No. No. And then if therefore she said that to us, that is incorrect insofar as you as understand. As far as I'm concerned, yes. Yeah, okay. Now were you ever, by anybody above yourself, um, in relation to the board, I suppose, operations mm -hmm. of the transport board, or outside of that in the political sphere, were you ever instructed by anybody to do anything that you considered to be outside of the, the recommended parameters of operations of the transport board? In other words, were you ever, the, the question was put to Ms. Sue, and, and, and in fact, your financial controller, and she mm -hmm. said um, yes to that. Were you ever given any instructions by anybody I had a management of the transport board, board director of the transport board, anybody in the political arena, 
Um, were you ever instructed by anybody above yourself to do anything that was contrary to regulation and policies of the board? That's your question to me. Are you, that's your, te your that's time. That's a uh, question. That's to a her. question put to her, and I'm putting it okay. to you. She Hell said yes. No. Hell no. All right. Uh, no will suffice. <laughs> I don't All operate right. at that level. Nope. All right. Mm -mm. Unless there that is a question. Not, Mr. Trumpman, you're done. Don't. No, I don't operate at that level. It's Minister so. Husbands, Minister uh, Jordan. Mm -hmm. oh. Senators? Senator Nurse, any queries? No, nothing. Nothing. Not, a, not no at this time. Questions. I mean, any, not, not at this. any question, uh, Senator Tricks? Yeah. I am listening intently, but uh, not at this uh, all time. All right, and we thank you for your intense interest. Uh, Ms. Ward, I want to thank you on behalf of the, the committee for coming again today, taking your time to share your perspective on matters. Obviously, these are serious matters, and the comments of the Auditor General in the relevant report um, are, are so weighty as would cause concern to uh, interested Barbadians and certainly to the members that constitute this committee. And we thank you for giving your perspective. That will help us to come to the kind of conclusions um, that we may um, be led to report to the Parliament of the Barbados in such a way as that the operations at the entity and other entities in the public arena of Barbados may be improved in the interests of Barbadians. Thank so you. I, I thank you and I thank you, uh, Mr. Pierce. The pleasure is mine. There are some refreshments over there. I think um, you, you, you're invited and welcome to partake of that before you leave because you've been here for a couple of hours. So I thank you. You can take your leave. You can take your leave, uh, Ms. Ford, Mr. Pierce. And you can instruct um, them to cut the public uh, feed, uh, Mr. Marsh. I think he understood me. You know, tell me, can you try to keep it to stop me? Mm -hmm. 